You don't want to be one of those people. You know, the ones who are dumb with money, and I want to help. In this video, I'll show you the top nine ways people are dumb with money and how you can avoid the same mistakes. What's up everyone? My name is Matt Matheson. I am a personal finance writer, teacher, and school principal. I'm also the founder of Family Money School, and this channel is all about helping kids and the parents who love them become money rock stars. This isn't gonna come as a shock to you, but most people are bad with money. That's actually a massive understatement. Most people are terrible with money. In fact, being bad with money has become so widespread, there's even a branch of economics called behavioral finance that is solely dedicated to the study of why people are dumb with money. But that's not going to be you. That's why you're watching this video and you subscribe to Family Money School so you don't miss the killer videos I release every week. I mean, am I right? I hope so. Seriously though, today I'm gonna to show you nine ways people act foolishly with their money. Now, once you know all the dumb things they do, you can make sure you're not doing the same thing. So make sure you watch right to the end of the video so you don't miss out and cost yourself a boatload of cash. Now, before we dive in, can you do me a little favor and hit the like button so that more people can check out these videos and start rocking their money? Thanks so much. Okay, let's get rolling. The first way people are dumb with money is the most obvious. They live a lifestyle they can't afford. Now, these are folks who spend way too much time trying to look rich without actually spending enough time learning to actually grow rich. And this type of dumb is everywhere. Average credit card debt over $6,000. New car payments $575 a month. Student loan averages over $37,000. The average mortgage balance, $208,000. Average summer vacation, over $2,000. And the average American spends $232 a month just eating out. I mean, it's gotten so consistently out of control that MasterCard has posted record profits in 15 of the last 16 years. And the only year it decreased was 2020, the year of the pandemic with layoffs, lockdowns, and economic strife across the globe. Our culture is one of spending, spending, and more spending, with no thought to how people will actually pay for all this excess. And pay they will, with the power of compound interest working against them, leading to a debt spiral that can be extremely difficult to escape. Do yourself a huge favor and avoid spending money you don't have on things you don't need to impress people you either don't even know or don't like. The people that truly like you, they don't care how much money you spend. Instead, dial back your lifestyle to live within your means. Now that'll mean doing without some of the finer things in life that you may be used to, like a flashy new car, expensive vacations, and gourmet dinners out. But I can guarantee you that nothing tastes as good as being debt-free feels. Okay, the second way people are dumb with money is that they're not following a budget. Thomas Stanley, the author of the groundbreaking book, The Millionaire Next Door, in which he studied the characteristics of millionaires, said that winning with money has less to do with how much money you make and a lot more to do with how much money you keep. It's one thing to make a lot of money, but if you spend every dollar you earn, at the end of the month, you still have an empty bank account. People who are dumb with money spend and spend and spend. And then they look up at the end of the month and you know they wonder where all their money has gone. Not only do they end up broke, they never move forward towards their financial goals because they don't have a plan to get there. In order to avoid this, you need to make sure you have a plan for every dollar you earn and that you know exactly where your money is going. And the best way to do that is to budget. Just like going on vacation without a plan would be a nightmare, living without a budget is a recipe for disaster. A budget is just a plan for what you're going to spend your money on. The spending without a plan, well, that's super dangerous. You'll overspend, never reach your goals, and you may end up sleeping on a park bench on your vacation, all while earning a good income. Dumb. Next up is the dumb money mistake of not planning for emergencies. Now, emergencies are not fun. Like a sudden storm that whips up out of nowhere and destroys everything in its path, financial emergencies have the potential to destroy your finances quicker than almost anything. I mean, whether it's the loss of a job, an unexpected healthcare expense, a car that breaks down, or a roof that needs fixing, 
These situations can bring you to your knees. But there is a solution, a seemingly magical account, able to neutralize all the perils of your next emergency. Its name? The Emergency Fund. Now, an emergency is, by definition, a surprise. Webster's Dictionary defines it as an unforeseen combination of circumstances, or the resulting state that calls for immediate action. But here's the thing about financial emergencies. They're not unexpected. You know they will happen. Whether it's a blown motor on your car, a leaky roof, or a job loss, there are always going to be situations where you'll need a large sum of money to keep your financial ship from sinking. That much is a certainty. The part that's unexpected is the cause of the emergency. But really, the cause is way less important than the fact that you'll need a bunch of cash to keep your head above water. Now, because you know emergencies will happen, it only makes sense to plan for them. I mean, you wouldn't go outside on a stormy looking day without an umbrella, and you shouldn't go through life without an emergency. And you'll need a pretty big umbrella to keep you dry. Specifically, experts recommend stashing away three to six months worth of expenses to cover these situations. And while that seems like a lot of money, and it is, you'll feel pretty smart when the next emergency strikes. Okay, fourth up is giving in to lifestyle creep. Now, when you get a raise, it can be really tempting to increase your spending, especially on things that fall into the wants category. Each time your salary goes up, your spending follows suit. When your spending increases with your salary, it can make purchases that once seemed unnecessary feel like desperate things you need to have. People may spend to keep up with their friends, to feel better about themselves, or to give their kids the things they didn't have growing up. And lifestyle creep, also known as lifestyle inflation, may not seem like a big deal. In fact, it seems like the most normal thing to do when you get a raise. I mean, increase your dinners out, get a nicer car, go on that vacation that you've been wanting to take. And treating yourself to an indulgence or two, I mean, that's not the end of the world. But the problem occurs when this becomes a pattern of behavior. Because when that happens, your treats rob you of the potential to invest for your future. And as you know from my other videos, investing is the secret sauce to growing your wealth. Which is why one massive money mistake many people make is to put off investing. Now, this is going to sound selfish, but you need to put yourself first. Dumb money pays everyone else first before you invest. Heat, cable, groceries, car payments, Netflix, restaurants, etc. You need to put your future and your family's future ahead of everything except being generous. Because if you wait to save and invest from the leftovers every month, you will not have anything left over. And that's not just my opinion, it's science. Parkinson's law states that work expands so as to fill the time available for its completion. And its financial cousin is that expenses expand to fill the budget money allotted. That's why you need to save money before you spend it on everything else. That way, when your expenses expand to use all the money you make each month, you'll already have socked away cash for your future. And the best way to do this is to automate your savings. By setting up automatic withdrawals from your bank account every month, you'll put your savings on autopilot. So you only need to make the wise decision to save one time. After that, the automation takes over and does the saving for you. The money you save is dead to you, it's gone, it's unspendable. And after a while, you won't even miss it until it's turned into millions of dollars in the future. And your future wise self will thank you for it. Okay, I'm gonna keep number six short and sweet. People are playing with fire if they're paying someone to manage their investments. Now, I could give you a long and detailed explanation as to why it's incredibly foolish to pay someone to manage your investments. I could tell you about how 89% of professional money managers underperformed the S&P 500 for the 10 years ending in December 2019 when fees were included. I could show you the research that has found that over the long term, only 2%, 2% of active public stock managers exhibited evidence of any skill. And I could show you that a blindfolded monkey throwing darts at a newspaper's financial pages could select investments that would consistently beat a portfolio carefully selected by experts. 
True story, I'm not making this stuff up, but I won't. I'll just say that lots of people are scared by math. It's intimidating. They avoid it like a Mountain Dew addict avoids a dentist. And so when they hear about the seemingly small fees of 2% or so that financial advisors and mutual fund managers charge, they basically ignore them, assuming that since 2% is a small number, the impact will be small. Don't make that mistake. Otherwise, your investments could end up like that guy on the toilet in Jurassic Park. You remember that guy, right? No? Imagine you have $100,000 invested. If the account earned 6% a year for the next 25 years and had no costs or fees, you'd end up with around $430,000. Now, if on the other hand, you paid 2% a year in costs, after 25 years, you'd only have about $260,000. That's right. The 2% you paid every year would wipe out almost 40% of your final account value. I mean, suddenly that 2% doesn't sound so tiny anymore, does it? Don't be dumb. Avoid high fees by investing in low cost index mutual funds or ETFs. Your future self sitting on a toilet in a rogue dinosaur park will thank you. Next up, people who are foolish with their money are constantly financing their purchases. Now, financing a house is one thing. Most of us don't have a few hundred thousand dollars sitting around to drop on a new home. And over the long term, real estate does tend to increase in value. But it is truly dumb to borrow money to purchase something that goes down in value. These items known as depreciating assets end up costing the borrower more money than they were originally worth because you're paying interest on the money you borrow. I speak from experience. I bought a new car once. I financed it over five years and ended up paying well over the $30,000 I paid for it the day I drove it off the lot. Then, four years later when I sold it, it was worth $12,000. Ouch. And the outcome is worse if you finance quickly depreciating purchases like furniture, electronics, and hot tubs. Don't make that same mistake. Which leads us to number eight on the dumb money list, when people spend impulsively. Now when it comes to spending, letting your emotions get the best of you always leads to two things, light wallets and heavy debt loads. And it's easy to do. Because every time you watch or listen to a commercial, look at a billboard or set foot in a store, sinister forces are at work to part you from your hard earned money. You know, whether it's the smell of delicious baked goods wafting through the air as you enter the grocery store designed to make you hungry and buy more, or the slow music playing overhead in retail stores, again, designed to slow you down so you spend more time in the store and, you guessed it, buy more. Business psychologists and marketers work overtime to get us to spend impulsively using a variety of retail mind tricks. So what can you do to fight back? Well, the first step is to be aware of what is happening. It's retail psychological warfare in every store. So make sure you shop with your eyes and your mind wide open. But being aware isn't enough. In addition, wise spenders implement a mandatory 30 day spending rule. Simply wait 30 days every time you want to make a purchase. Then after the month has passed, if you still think the item is worth the cost and you have the money, go ahead and buy it. If it's something you truly want after a month, your desire will be even greater. But if on the other hand, it was just your emotions impulsively tempting you to spend, there is a pretty good chance your desire to spend will have faded by then. The ninth way people are dumb with money is that they sweat the small stuff and ignore the big ones. You'll notice I haven't included cutting out lattes from the list of dumb money mistakes. You won't find slashing date nights from your budget or repurposing old items into new ones. I mean, there's no advice to go all Marie Kondo on your house and garage sale everything or to sew old t-shirts into new underwear. There's none of that. Now, that's not because these aren't good ideas. They are. I mean, everything except the underwear thing. It's just because in and of themselves that they only move the needle a tiny bit. That's because according to George Lowenstein, a behavioral economist whose whole job it is to study why people are dumb with money, it focuses on the wrong type of transaction. Lowenstein explains that for your average person, a lot of the overspending they do isn't on the small things, but it's large things that are often quite invisible. He goes so far as to say that there are usually more savings to be had from revisiting your auto or home insurance policy 
or phone bill than from skipping the marginal cup of coffee. Overall, according to this dumb money expert, it's more effective to make changes with larger one-time decisions instead of regularly having to make all these micro decisions. So instead of trimming down on the old coffee habit, take some time to call around and find the best price on your home and auto insurance policies. I mean, shop around for the best rate when your mortgage is due and drive a hard bargain when you're in the market for things like a house or a car. By focusing on cutting costs for these bigger expenses, you'll really move the needle with your overall savings. Now, all of these actions will help you to become money wise, but unless you master the art of psychological warfare, you'll never fully reach your financial potential. So in the next video, I'll share seven psychological money saving tips you can start right now to make you a millionaire. I'll see you there.